This is not a normal situation in an apiary. Something like that triggered different feelings around us. Some people get scared, some people think it's beautiful, but for a true beekeeper, the feeling is sadness. What do you see here is a hostile takeover, nature in its pure form, honeybees taking resources from another honeybee hive, something called robbing. Honeybees apes mellifera are constantly collecting nectar from many different flowers and storing it inside the hive in the form of honey. Honey is the source of carbohydrates to help bees survive the winter. Without honey, their survivorship is on the line, which makes honey a very valuable commodity among these incredible insects. Robbing events are very violent. The excitement among bees trying to invade the hive and bees defending themselves in the nest is very impressive and can get proportions able to hurt people around. It always starts with the shortage of nectar and pollen in an environment. Colonies start to search for food intensely and neighbors' honeybee colonies are always a good choice to explore. Strong colonies can defend themselves better from the initial foragers looking for opportunities to steal. The problem starts when some of the forager bees are able to get in and out of a neighbor honeybee hive with some of their resources. This bee now can fly home and recruit hundreds of other bees to do the same. Weaker colonies are normally the target because of the limited number of bees to defend themselves. The battle is very intense. In this example, we have several colonies attacking the same target colony. When something like this happens, there is no much to do. The destiny of the target colony is decided and the invader will bring home the fruit of other bees' work. The natural world is a wild place, but ironically, at least in this case, there are consequences from taking from the weaker. When honeybee colonies collapse, from high infestations of varroa mites, neighboring colonies often experience surges in their mite populations. Investigating how varroa mites are transferred from one colony to another, Dr. David Peck and Dr. Tom Seeley found something very interesting. They put together a group of mite receptor colonies, or MRCs, and a group of mite donor colonies, or MDCs, in the same EAPI area as you can see here. The heavily varroa infested group, the mite donor colonies, are yellow bees of a particular race, and the mite free colonies, called mite receptor colonies, belong to a race of bees predominantly black. The high contrast color helped the researchers to differentiate them in the field to perform the study. The researchers monitored the movement of the bees between the black bees and yellow bees colonies before, during and after the mite-induced collapse of the donor colonies. And the results were quite interesting. This video was made possible by our fans on Patreon. If you want to know more and participate in our future plans, please consider supporting me on Patreon. For more information, visit patreon.com slash insidethehivetv. Thank you. This figure shows that in the mite donor colonies, the phoretic mite levels rose strongly in the early August, peaked between mid-August and early September, and then dropped very fast in the late September, which was when the bee population of these three colonies fell and the colonies were robbed. 
Interestingly, the phoretic mite levels and the mite drop counts in the mite receptor colonies began to rise shortly after they were placed in the experimental apiary in mid-August, and that both measurements of mite abundances in the mite receptor colonies rose sharply between mid and late September. Just when the phoretic mite levels in the mite donor colonies fell abruptly, now the question is: Is it drifting or robbing? What processes produce this pattern of surging mite loads in the MRCs? The data suggests strongly that the primary process was robbing of the collapsing MDCs by workers from the MRCs, as you can see here. When the authors measured the number of fight events between bees of different colors in front of a hive, represented here as a small empty circles, and robbing events, represented here as full squares, the data suggests that robbing was a more intense event in this critical time point. After a series of other experiments, the authors conclude that robbing played a major role in producing the surges in the mite loads of the MRCs because of three important things that happened simultaneously in late September. One, the mite donor colonies lost their strength to the point where they were intensely robbed by workers from the mite receiver colonies. Number two, the mite loads of mite donor colonies plumbed. And three, the mite load of mite receiver colonies surged. Do you agree with the author's conclusion? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. The consequences of stealing from the weak at least in this case will not end up well for the robbers. These honeybee colonies will take not only for raw mite but all other diseases the weaker colonies were facing. Is it worth it? Nature is full of surprises. If you want to know more stories about bees, please click the thumbnails on the screen right now and the logo to subscribe if you didn't already. Thanks for watching Inside the Hive.tv, the show about bees. See you guys next week.